In this video, we're going to install a brushed motor upgrade in our SCX24. Let's take a look at our motors before we get to the install. So I've got two different motors here that we're going to be taking a look at today. And the reason is that the installation is different depending on which motor you go with. Now the one on my right hand side here, this is the Predator. This is the 50 turn. This is a 50 sized motor. It's a longer canister as you can see compared to the little rocket, which is a 88 turn 30 sized motor. Now the 30 size motor is the same exact size as the stock motor. So this is going to be a direct bolt-in direct swap. Whereas the 50 size motor has a longer body on it. So we might need to do some trimming depending on which model SCX24 you have. You'll also see that the 50 size motor comes with a new motor plate. And this is necessary to bolt this up to the SCX24 transmission. It is supplied with the motor, so you don't have to purchase anything extra. It comes with the kit. But if you're going with the larger motor, just be aware that there is a little extra step in swapping out this plate and some potential chassis modifications, very, very light modifications to get this bigger motor to fit. These are two of the three brushed motor replacements that Little Guy Racing Parts offers. There is a third that kind of fits right in the middle here, which would be the Reaper 66 turn. But let's get into the install. We're going to look at installing both of these. I'll show you the differences as we get going and we'll settle on one of the two motors for our final product. Let's take a look. Let's get into this. So to install these motors, you will need a 0.05 hex driver, 1.5 millimeter hex driver, a four millimeter nut driver. Depending on which motor you go with, you might also need some snips or some heavy duty scissors. Here's our rig here. We're going to be installing the motors in a deadbolt. Now this deadbolt is pretty heavily modified with just bolt-ons, but the installation will be the same as if it was stock. So what we're going to do, first thing before I get into this, whenever I do any kind of modifications like this, I like to take the body off. It just makes it really so much easier to work on it without the body flopping around in your face. There, now with the body off, we've got clear working area here. Second thing I'm going to do, I'm going to remove our battery tray. With the battery tray and the body off, we've got clear access to the motor here, no problem. Now I'm going to unplug the motor from the ESC and we're going to start unbolting it. Now to take the motor in the transmission out, there are three bolts. There's one right here on the driver's side of the transmission right next to your frame rails. I'm going to do that last. There are two more on the skid plate underneath it. So I'm going to start with these. I start with these so that when I remove these two bolts, the motor and the transmission don't just fall out of the chassis while I've got it upside down. Now with these three bolts undone, pull the motor right out. No problem. Whole unit comes out. Now this is also running the little guy racing parts billet transmission, same dimensions as stock. So again, the installation will be the same as if you were working on a stock unit. Now I'm going to set my chassis aside. We're going to work on the motor and the transmission here. Now I'm going to remove the front drive shaft, the stubby front drive shaft here. Next, I'm going to remove the transmission cover. This is just two screws right here on the back side by the motor. With the transmission cover off here, you can now see where the motor is bolted on. To get access to these two screws, we do need to remove the spur gear from the transmission. This is where you're going to need that four millimeter nut driver, same size as your wheel nut. Now with the gear off, we have access to the motor. So to take the 
stock motor off, which is what we're going to do first, you need your 1.5 millimeter hex driver here. And there it is. There's your stock 88 turn dynamite motor out of here, ready for the upgrade. Now this is where you're going to go one of two directions. If you wanted to do the little rocket motor, let's say we're going to do that one. You're going to take your motor. You can see that these motors do not come with the pinion gears pressed on, so you're going to do that yourself. So that's what we're going to do right now. So we have our plastic pinion gear. We're just going to press this onto the motor shaft. I like to push it on as much as I can with my fingers, and then I'm just going to press it against a flat surface to do the rest of it. And when that motor shaft is just about at the end of that pinion gear, you're good to go. You've got a good seat right there. Make sure it spins nice and freely. Good to go. So if you were installing the little rocket motor, you would leave your motor plate as is on the stock transmission. You would just bolt this up exactly like you would the stock motor. And then you would just bolt it up. You'd put the other one in and then you'd put your spur gear on and you'd be good to go. That's all you need to do for the little rocket motor. But let's say you're doing the Predator, you're doing the 50 turn, the 50 size motor. There's some extra steps here. You saw that the Predator motor comes with a different motor plate. So now we're going to have to swap out the motor plates here. Very simple. It's just four bolts here that we're going to undo. So we're going to go back to our 0 0.05 inch hex driver and we're going to remove the stock motor plate. And all we do is just remove these four bolts. You do need to be mindful when you take all these screws out, your transmission is now free to come apart as well. You see it's able to crack that open. So just be mindful of that. Keep your transmission together. Now we're just going to swap in that new plate. It goes on exactly the same way, uses the same hardware. Getting the plates secured and then it'll go around and tighten them. Okay, with all four in there, now I'm going to tighten them up in opposite corners. Not overly tight. The key with the SCX24 with, with any upgrade, be mindful not to over tighten these little screws no matter where you are in the build. So there's our new motor plate. You can see the difference is that you just have two extra holes here that the stock plate doesn't. And that just gives us more versatility to mount different motors. Like with the little rocket, we're going to have to press our pinion gear onto the motors. We're going to do that now. Okay, we've got a good seat, we're good to go. Now, bolt the Predator up here. Okay, now we have our motor on. Next, we're gonna start reinstalling the transmission components. So we're gonna take our spur gear, we're gonna put this back on. And make sure we've got good mesh. Everything's nice and tight. We got nice free movement here. Feels good. Now we're gonna put our four millimeter nylon nut back on the transmission. Now, I cannot stress enough to be cautious here about over tightening this nut. Do not over tighten this nut. The reason is if you over tighten this, you will prematurely burn out your motor. And I speak from experience when I say that this is one of the easiest way to burn out your motor is to just over tighten this nut. You just want it tight enough 
so that there's no slop in the gear. It's almost just finger tight. I give it just a little bit beyond finger tight. Let's see, my gear has a little tiny bit of play in it, but I'd rather have that than the alternative. It still moves nice and freely. There's not a lot of slop in there. I've got good mesh. Do not over tighten the nut. That's all you need. We don't want any friction, any more stress on this motor and transmission than we need to. So now we're good to go. We're going to start reassembling the cover. With the cover on, now we can put our drive shaft back in. We can then put it back in the chassis. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to secure it with this bolt on the inside first. Flip it over. Okay, with our motor and transmission installed. Now there's one more component to this installation with the bigger motor. This is the other difference from the little rocket, the smaller motor. Putting the battery tray back in. What you'll find, if you can see that, this leg on the battery tray no longer fits with the bigger motor. Because the canister is longer, right here, I can't bolt the battery tray into the frame here. So what I need to do is cut this leg of the battery tray off. So let's do this in real time here. I'll show you exactly what I mean. This is where I said you can take your snips and we're just going to cut it nice and flush. We're going to leave all the other ones so we'll bolt on that long one on the other side. These two should be good to go. Now let's just bolt this back up. Now just plug your motor in. And there you have it, brushed motor upgrade for the SCX24.